what are your thoughts on the, the Dean Phillips effort? Well, let me start ecumenically and say I've, I've been telling Democrats who would listen for years that they need to build a, a younger bench. And that was true in Congress. I was supportive of Tim Ryan's effort to to sort of, you know, push Nancy Pelosi aside and, and get some younger blood into Democratic leadership, because not only is it necessary inside the party, but then you grow a bench and you condition Democratic voters to see new people. They haven't seen a new face in forever, you know, not since Barack Obama came along. And, and, you know, they, they really just like to keep putting the same people into these positions. So ecumenically, I love this. I love oh, wait, these wait, younger... Essie, wait, wait, let's summarize. Barack, Hillary, Joe, yeah. Joe. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And listen, before Trump, we did the same thing. We decided who was going to be the next nominee at the last election, right? Like whose turn was it? Who came in second? We'll put them up. And so we didn't, you know, we didn't give voters a a, a, a chance to, um, you know, find new talent really either. So that's that's ecumenically. I love this um, I, I idea. You know, practically. It's a long shot. I'm sure you know this. And and um, I'm sure I haven't met Dean Phillips. I, I, I might have. I might have interviewed him at some point. Um, he seems lovely and really smart. And I, I, I like his brand of, of politics. And I think he could do well in New Hampshire. But it's really hard to go against an incumbent. You know this. Um, because you have the full weight and resources of the DNC or the RNC behind you. It's just really hard to sort of jostle that you know, infrastructure loose and cut through it. But listen, I, I have nothing against Joe personally, and I will vote for him if Trump is the nominee, but I would love to see someone new come along from either party. I think our parties are broken and we can see from polling that most people agree. About 65% of Americans do not feel aligned with either of the two parties. And that's because they're in the middle on almost every issue. The parties like to talk in extremes. And so you can feel very unrepresented if you are in the middle, in fact, the majority uh, on lots of issues from abortion to immigration to guns to climate. If you're in the middle, you feel orphaned by your party because you're not pure enough. You're not, you're not, you know, loyal enough. Um, that's very, I think, um, disorienting for a lot of voters. And they're deeply, deeply disillusioned with our two parties, and they don't want either of these guys. They don't want to make this choice. Yeah, the Biden-Trump rematch is unappealing to three out of four Americans or something ridiculous. Oh. Uh, and, and it really puts the dysfunction of the parties in stark relief. Uh, I'm with you on trying to upgrade generationally. Um, I, I also agree, you know, the party um, has it out for you. Uh, it's tough. Um, so with, with Dean's campaign, let's say he puts up a big number in New Hampshire yeah. Uh, and then the press looks at it and is like, wow, like that, that, because I think even people who are very deeply in the know would be shocked and stunned if Dean put up 25% or whatever the number is. Uh, uh, and then uh, the question is whether you get a genuine horse race dynamic. Um, South Carolina happens um, 10 days later, it'd be tough. Um, but Michigan, Michigan is at the end of February and that could be a real contest, especially because there's a lot of discontent with Joe uh, in Michigan yeah. uh, in, in various quarters. But do you worry that, let's say he does well in New Hampshire, do you worry that Biden and plenty of folks in the media will just say, well, Biden wasn't there, he wasn't on the ballot? Yeah, I mean, they're going to try and minimize the impact of the loss yeah. for sure. Um, but you are looking at an environment where the incumbent president traditionally will get you know, 85, 90 percent um, with zero effort at all. Yeah. Uh, and, and you also have an historical precedent of I think it was Hubert Humphrey challenging uh, LBJ and getting 42 percent in New Hampshire. And then LBJ said, I'm out afterwards. So there is this whole range. I mean, gosh, if Dean were to get 42 percent, uh, everyone would look at that and say, I mean, like, like this is a repudiation of the yeah. Biden plan. Um, and, and I do think the Biden plan is a terrible plan. I think that the, as in the running Biden, I don't, I'm not talking about a specific policy. I'm talking the Biden plan to run for reelection a second time. I mean, if he were to do a George Washington and say, 
hey, I'm, I'm, I'm out, uh, time to pass the torch to the next generation. He would go down in the books as one of the greats. Yeah. Beats Trump gets a, a lot of uh, great things done, is a voice of reason on the world stage, and then steps aside for the next generation. That's like check, yeah. check, check. As it is, instead, it's going to be overstay welcome, uh, in, like serve the country back to Trump, uh, you know, on a platter, um, and then bemoan the end of democracy. I mean, <laughs> that, yeah. that, 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 that's where we're heading, in my estimation. He's sort of Brett Farving it, right? I mean, he, overstaying a little bit too much for that last season with the Jets, which didn't really work out. Um, and this was so unnecessary because he was elected to be a transitional. He even president. called himself, a, I'm going to be a bridge to the next generation. That's and right. my, my joke, as he was like, that's right. bridge to the next generation is not cling to office until you expire at the age of 86. I mean, that's nuts. Exactly. And... Yeah, the, the, there should be no embarrassment among Democrats that they want to move on from Joe Biden. The idea was him for him to get out, get Trump out, get some sanity restored, which he did. Check, check, check. And then, yeah, leave it to the next Democrat in line of of your choosing. Right. So there should be no embarrassment about that. But they are so unwilling to admit that it's his time to go and move on. They won't do it. They can't do it. And it might end up, you know, handing the country back over to Trump. Hey, YouTube, thanks for watching. Please do hit like and subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified every time a new episode drops. Thank you.